ഹായ് എവരി വൺ ഹവ് ഇറ്റ് വിറ്റ് യു വൺസ് അഗെയിൻ ടുഡേ യു ലെറ്റ് സ്റ്റഡി എ പോയം ബൈ വില്യം ഷേക്സ്പിയർ യു നോ ഹൂ ഷേക്സ്പിയർ ഈസ് ഹി ഈസ് കോൾഡ് ദ മാസ്റ്റർ ക്രാഫ്റ്റ്സ് മെൻ ടിൽ നൗ നോ ബഡി ഹാസ് റീച്ച്ഡ് ഹിസ് പ്ലേസ് ഇൻ ലിറ്ററേച്ചർ even 19th century dramatist george bernard shaw is named as next only to shakespeare yes nobody is as equal as shakespeare only next only to shakespeare he was born 1564 up to 1616 actually very little is known about his early age and uh, whether the date of his birth was right or not doubts are there but the last part of his life is well known some proofs are there okay so his period 1564 to 1616 the elizabethan period of literature okay and he wrote Uh, so many dramas actually 37 dramas in first year intermediate test book you can find is 36 i hope it is a printing mistake because shakespeare wrote 37 dramas the tempest is his 37th considered to be his last drama written by shakespeare if you take any collection of shakespeare shakespeare collection of dramas you can find tempest being the first one because it was contemporary the last one to publish it was uh, published in the year written in the year i mean um, uh, 16 10 11 period yes 16 10 so in that uh, um, drama the tempest the magician prospero bidding farewell to his magic art is considered to be shakespeare bidding farewell to his dramatic art art of writing dramas and he retired to stratford on avon and the remaining years he spent happily there shakespeare began his dramatic career by writing history plays based on chronicles chronicles of Cro- hollingshed etc chrono means time chronicle means according to time events recorded according to time is chronicle okay this actually in a way history being rewritten not ex- exactly in the form of a drama so based on that this history plays were written then he moved to writing comedies then tragedy comedies comedy will reach to the level of a tragedy then come back again to become a comedy tragedy comedy for example merchant of venice it might have become a tragedy at the end see on the third stage of his dramatic career that he wrote tragedies world famous tragedies are there four of them king lear othello macbeth and hamlet hamlet is considered to be i mean philosophical play yes and comes the last plays where everything comes to a compromise uh, i mean uh, the tempest also at the end everything becomes uh, i mean happy and a happy ending is there that is a nutshell of our william shakespeare in addition to that he wrote 154 sonnets so now you know short poem or lyric poem of 14 lines shakespeare has a separate style of writing it three quatrains and a concluding couplet you study in later a b a b c d c d e f e f and g g couplet okay then he wrote i mean uh, long poems also but here we study uh, an extract from a i mean um, a history play See, let us go to move on to that poem. Uh, Shakespeare, Common Wealth of Bees. Yes, bees you know. Okay, now. Common Wealth means community. Community. 
a community is meant for well being or welfare is it not so what is it can be called a community yes so common wealth of bees bees you know and comb bees the society of bees how do they live etc and etc okay now you can take your test books please all of you first year intermediate students i mean a page number 55 the poem is given there in your test book and about the i mean how uh, there is there page number 56 and about the poem few lines you have to take care and study you see that is a introduction because some background you should know to study this poem about the poem page number 56 paragraph number 2 the poem common wealth of bees is an excerpt from william shakespeare's play is drama henry fifth act 1 scene 2 henry fifth a history play act 1 scene 2 yes it is extracted from there here henry's archbishop of canterbury archbishop of canterbury offers to him in a lengthy speech he advises the king a pattern of for the organization of his common wealth in the time of war what kind of society they should contribute they should form during the time of war during the war archbishop of canterbury say bishop actually but he is an advisor to the king he is not simply advisor just like a minister or a chief minister no even prime minister see actually the king was advised by some ministers and they assembled in a small room this is cabinet cabinet means small room cabinet meeting advisers assembled in a small room so cabinet and cabinet meeting that is uh, all originated in england so archbishop of canterbury so during that time i mean uh, this church church of england really uh, participated in administration so interfered and participated in the administration of the country yes so here archbishop is not simply a bishop of the church but he is just like a minister his advice won't be a disregard it will be taken seriously according to the advice that uh, the king acts so here the archbishop of canterbury advises the king is to venture a military attack towards france so england and france they were bitterest enemies bitterest enemies there were many uh, wars between them they fought very often a failure and success alternated so long history is there england and france here archbishop of canterbury is advising the king for a military venture that means to attack the kingdom of france and defeat it archbishop says that uh, we have a rightful claim to the throne of france see for example if our i mean uh, one of the ministers advising the prime minister to attack pakistan or even bangladesh telling that uh, uh, it's all part of india it was all part of india partition divided uh, the uh, in hindustan and pakistan now we should take back it is we have, we have a claim on the kingdom of our uh, territory of pakistan we must attack and uh, get uh, that area also um, united with uh, okay i mean um, union of india if somebody can advise Whether it's possible or not is a different thing okay now yes so see one second the line here the archbishop of canterbury offers to him in a lengthy speech oh a pattern for the organization of his common wealth during the time of war what kind of a society we should make during the time of war he goes on we can read it here. Uh, he can, he his country can support a military venture means attempt that means military attack to take that throne while also protecting security at home we can 
uh, attack France and we can maintain law and order in the state also. Uh, the words of advice by Archbishop of Canterbury. Yes, an important part of Canterbury's, I mean, argument is that uh, on the bee he was a metaphor. Yes, the kingdom of Bihi, the society of the bees. He takes it as a metaphor uh, for a rightly ordered kingdom. So bees, society or commonwealth can be taken as a metaphor for a rightly ordered kingdom. The best example of a rightly ordered kingdom we can take the behave as the best example. It is a metaphor. See, what is a metaphor? I know that you have studied it in school level also. Simile. Simile and metaphor. Simile is a comparison. Two things are compared. Okay, now. Uh, like, you see, uh, is generally used. For example, my love is like a red rose. This is an example given an authoritative test book, a glossary of literary terms by M. H. Abrams. You can take it from the library and read it. It is there. A glossary of literary terms by M. H. Abrams. My love is like a red red rose. Means there is similarity between my love and a red rose. Whereas metaphor, there is no difference. The word like is not used. Yes. So, my love is a red rose. Imagine a lover going to, a lady, to his lady love, taking a rose flower and telling to her, this is my love. My love is a red rose. It is not like, it is a red rose. My love is a red rose. There is, there is no difference between my love and this red rose. There is no implied simile. There is no difference between. See, uh, I mean, uh, one thing and to which it is uh, compared. It's not comparison implied. It's already in it. So there is no comparison. One and the same. That's what metaphor is. You will have studied it in a school level also. Yes, behave can be taken as a metaphor. Uh, for a, what a rightly ordered kingdom. Yes, rightfully ruled kingdom. So, Vihivi can be taken as a metaphor. The best example. Means there is no difference between this one and that one. Okay now. So, come to the lesson proof. See, actually, the full text is not given there. Some, I mean, one or two stanza, some lines were before, some were after also. So, let us go what was before to get an idea of where it begins. So I will read it, just listen that. See, in that before your poem, few lines I will read, recite to get an idea of that. Therefore doth heaven divide heaven. God divides what? The state of man in diverse functions. This is the reason why God has divided the state of man in diverse functions, different activities. God has divided the state of man into quite different activities. Setting endeavor in continual motion in order to you see, make, I mean, uh, endeavor means hard work. In continual motion means movement. In order to make them work hard, God has divided uh, the state of man into diverse functions. Yes. For what? To which he is fixed as an aim or but. For which uh, an aim or motto is fixed. What is that? Uh, obedience. The aim of it is to make the people obedient. God has divided but, uh, the, what is that, uh, the state of man. The poet says that uh, God has divided the state of man in diverse or different functions. Take for example our own country. Previously division of labor was there. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. 
തീയറ്റിക്കലി ദ പർപ്പസ് വാസ് ടു മേക്ക് പീപ്പിൾ ഇൻ എ ഓർഡേർലി ബിഹേവ് ഇൻ എ ഓർഡേർലി ഫാഷൻ ബ്രാഹ്മിൻസ് വിൽ ഡീൽ വിത്ത് ഗോഡ്ലി മാറ്റേഴ്സ് ക്ഷത്രിയാസ് വിൽ ടേക്ക് കെയർ ഓഫ് ദ പ്രൊട്ടക്ഷൻ ഓഫ് ദ കൺട്രി വൈശാസ് വിൽ ഡീൽ വിത്ത് ബിസിനസ് എക്സെട്ര ആൻഡ് ശൂദ്രാസ് വിൽ ഡു മീനിയൽ ജോബ്സ് ദ മോട്ടോ വാസ് ടു ഡിവൈഡ് ദ ലേബർ ബിറ്റ്വീൻ ഡിഫറെൻറ്റ് ടൈപ്സ് ആൻഡ് കൈൻസ് ഓഫ് പീപ്പിൾ ടു മേക്ക് ആൻ ഓർഡേർലി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ സെയിം വേ ഹിയർ ഗോഡ് ഹാസ് ഡിവൈഡ് ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് മാൻ ഇൻ ടു ഡൈവേഴ്സ് ഫംഗ്ഷൻസ് ദ എയും ബീങ് obedience in order to make them obedient the purpose of it was to make them obedient for so work the honey bees in this way the honey bees work the honey bees work in this way okay na for so work the honey bees our poem begins there see that first line for so work the honey bees the honey bees work in this way in what way in in an obedient manner god has divided what what are the state of man into diverse functions the purpose being to make them obedient yes in this work in this sorry in this way work or act the honey bees so therefore so work the honey bees honey bees work in this way so god has divided the state of man into different functions in order to make them obedient in this way the honey bees work the honey bees work in this way is it clear to you yes before lines what is meant or uh, mentioned is that god has divided the state of man different functions in order to make them obedient so for so work the honey bees in this way the honey bees work or act yes creatures honey bees they are the creatures that by rule in nature teach the art of order by rule in nature they teach us we are taught by the honey bees the big lesson the greatest of all lessons what is that the art of order to a peopled kingdom that means disciplined society they teach us a great lesson what lesson do they teach they teach the art of order honey bees teach i mean us yes they teach us what the art of order to a peopled kingdom to a disciplined society how a society should be disciplined it should be orderly It should be ruled in a systematic way. That lesson is taught to us by the honey bees. Yes, therefore, work, for so work the honey bees. Honey bees work in this way. They teach us what? Uh, the art of order uh, to a peopled kingdom, to a disciplined society. Yes. They have a king and officers of sort. look at the honey bees and their society and their commonwealth and their kingdom the hierarchical order how it is maintained see from top to bottom in any society there should be a hierarchy is it not so in our uh, country also we can find head of the state the president of india he is only nominal head the real power is the prime minister of india council of ministers headed by the prime minister and the ministers are there then law making body Uh, i mean uh, separation of powers uh, i mean legislature executive uh, council of ministers judiciary see then uh, under them the real executive i mean uh, ias ips ifs uh, under them uh, other government officials uh, up to the last grade clerk in an office they all work in a hierarchical order here the king at the top and the servants at the bottom that hierarchy that order is maintained here in the kingdom of honey bees they have a king and officers of sort means kind of different kinds of officers they have king and different kinds of officers also are there where some like magistrates in the country some people like magistrate like judges etc ah oh, correct at home 
means do corrective measures distributing justice someone is doing some mischievous things or some wrong being done he is punished see virtues rewarded why is punished he takes magistrates takes care of the law and order problem in a society they have that officers see in the kingdom of honey bees they to have these officers magistrates on top yes others like merchants some other group of people like merchants when you trade abroad they would do with trade etc and etc you see others like soldiers kshatriyas see merchants vaishyas uh, kshatriyas uh, soldiers armed in their stings uh, here their arm or their weapon is not a real sword a sting by which they take that uh, honey from that uh, flowers they will use that uh, sting and they will put that sting into that flower and take that honey out from the flowers yes make boot upon the summer's velvet buds a boot means plunder plundered object what's a boot here honey they go they fly and go to flowers and sit on top of them their sting they use and they take that honey from that uh, flowers and they gather it and bring back to their uh, i mean house or their nest or a honeycomb they store it there that's what they do in that kingdom also many kinds of officers are there yes make boot upon summer's velvet buds buds and blossom before it becomes a flower that is called bud okay now so they would go to the buds and blossom flowers as well as buds they would go and put their sting uh, and then they take it out which is plundered they don't ask the permission of a flower can i take your honey please no they are plundering they are snatching like robbers or thieves or uh, soldiers they attack the flower and take it out by force because no permission asked or granted is it not so they are plundering the flowers yes rule of nature so here the boy says that uh, they are plundering the honey from that flowers and take it by force like soldiers and take it march back to their house to store it in the honeycomb yes make good upon some maize velvet buds which pillage pillimis looted object that means uh, here the honey ah uh, they with merry with merry march marching merrily when they get that honey they can march home happily see with merry march marching merrily they bring home these honey bees bring home marching merrily they march merrily and bring this honey home to the tent royal see royal tent yes palace royal tent they bring honey comb their house their kingdom they bring happily to the royal tent uh, of their emperor actually king is not king but queen queen is emperor here so they bring this looted object the honey so like soldiers taking by force and bringing it home looted object the honey and they bring it back to their uh, to their emperor Yes, to the emperor they bring this honey. Ah, who? The emperor. Besieged in his majesty. He is so busy. The emperor is so busy now. Emperor, ruling, ruler. As he, in his majesty, surveys. Not a sur- survey. Okay, no? Not a survey. Uh, like a supervisor or something like a big leader. He surveys everything that is going on around. How the people work in the kingdom. he will be surveying all these what's going on around so like uh, an emperor he surveys uh, the singing masons masons building a uh, roofs of gold singing masons because the honey bees always will be uh, making some sound some humming sound they make is not so together it becomes a big sound so singing masons he can find they are building roofs of gold golden roof you can find honeycomb uh, yellowish color not red actually uh, gold roofs is yellowish color not red okay now so yellow color so golden roof they construct the masons so he is surveying how the golden roofs are constructed by the masons the emperor to the emperor they bring the honey bees bring the looted uh, i mean um, um, object that is honey 
that is the emperor they bring who is surveying how the uh, golden uh, roof is being constructed who is supervising and surveying yes then the civil citizens needing of the honey civil civil men sada or the people okay na uh, see they needing means processing so they bring you know uh, the honey but they, they should be processed to be stored for winter season so needing of the honey this activity of processing is done by uh, civil men sada or the people workers the poor mechanic porters many kinds of people are there from magistrate uh, to civil servants poor mechanic porters crowding in they will also come crowding their heavy burdens at this narrow gate carrying big loads of honey see mechanic porters carrying big loads of honey on their head yes then many kinds of people are there in the hierarchical order in the people kingdom orderly society so we see many kinds of people from magistrate and the soldiers to mechanic porters then the sad eyed justice here sad eyed means very serious so you can find the justice the symbol of justice itself is a eyes covered or blind is it not so there is no mercy there if uh, uh, doing good things will be rewarded bad things will be punished severely seriously that's what sad eyed justice with is a surely hum surely means uh, arrogant and angry hum humming sound he is also humming so there is some a sound being made by the honey bees delivering over to executors see he hands them over to executors those who are executing punishment to them they are handed over who are handed over pay lazy yawning drone lazy fellows you know some of the male bees are sterile and they don't participate in reproduction neither do they collect the honey from the flowers they are lazy fellows they are being punished they are handed over to executors for punishment that is their judiciary is it not so giving awarding punishment this i mean um, what is it uh, a lazy male fellows are handed over for punishment to the executors those who are executing punishment so whatever we see in a in an orderly state you can find in this honeycomb in any honeycomb they are the best example of a peopled kingdom or orderly society is the lazy yawning drone see yawning drone is stingless uh, male bees these stingless males are being handed over to executors for punishment so he is explaining different types and kinds of uh, officers and different types of people in a society an orderly society peopled kingdom let us continue i this infer see from this i infer i conclude this is our story look at a honeycomb you can find the best example of a peopled kingdom orderly society from king to to the uh, bottom level officers orderly kingdom orderly society the best example you can find in the kingdom of honey bees so honey bee is taken as a metaphor so i this infer from this example i infer i conclude i come to the conclusion says archbishop of canterbury from this observing the honeycomb and the example of honey bees i come to the conclusion that that many things having full reference to one consent many activities with one agreement may work contrariously yes in opposed ways many activities with one aim one motto one goal may work in different ways activities are many but aim is one look at your school or college how it is working how it is work take the example of your own school or college on top of it the principal would be there 
under her many teachers are there department heads hod then uh, other lecturers then teachers then now teaching staff then other computer operators and other um, i mean um, uh, class for uh, helpers uh, sweepers uh, to the gate watchmen watchman or watchman many are there now so from principal up to the watchman one aim one purpose one motto one goal giving education best education best best education edu- sorry best education to give you the best education is the purpose only one motto and one goal they are all doing different activities is not so principal may not come to your class and take lessons but uh, he is a teacher or he is a teacher of all teachers she gives instructions how to conduct the classes she manages them organizes them etc etc teachers will come to your class is it also a yes, and explain the lessons and uh, you are given printed notes so the even the computer operator is very important and uh, all those things the librarian many people are there may, are doing many activities with single purpose your education is it also even the gate watchmen or uh, ayas they don't open the uh, classroom uh, class cannot be conducted though they don't uh, do any teaching to you uh, i mean they don't take the class they are part and parcel of the system the society together we have one purpose giving education in the same way here take example of honeycomb from the king up to the last grade servant doing different activity with the word one purpose so i infer i conclude i come to the conclusion that uh, different activities can be carried on with a one purpose one motto one goal yes you see this got new but to one concern uh, may work contrariously see opposed ways they all act but the aim being one and the same as many arrows lose the several ways different arrows you see set in motion i mean in several ways come to one mark they all aim at one target is it not so you may have seen i mean um, mahabharata kurukshetra yuddha in that arjuna sending several arrows when he sends one arrow it will be multiplied into hundreds and they will all come and uh, target will be one yes which nobody can resist is it not so different arrows send they come through different ways but uh, target is one is it not so do you remember our bahubali bahubali 2 in that most crucial moment i mean uh, the heroine is taught how to send several arrows at a time do you remember that yes those arrows come and target at one okay now different arrows may aim at one target okay na okay uh, several ways come to one mark as many ways meet in one town many ways many roads meet in one town you can reach the capital of a country for example uh, new delhi many ways are there to reach you can go by bus you can go by train you can go by air you can go by car or even on foot you can go but they all reach same target there are also also many roads are there is it not so yes there are saying all roads lead to rome lead to rome okay so i mean uh, many ways can be aimed at one purpose as many fresh streams meet in one salt to see many streams would flow and reach one aim the sea as many lines close in dial center dial sun dial clock for example center one line is there one i mean uh, i mean many lines close in one dial center so many lines are di- i mean in many ways but uh, the center is one is it not so the reach to center yes in the same way many thousand actions once a foot in the same way thousands of actions once a foot means set in motion see once set in motion end in one purpose 
it can all be aimed at one purpose different activities different actions can be aimed at one purpose in the same way many roads lead to one city many arrows aim at one target and many rivers reach the soul to see in the same way different activities can be aimed at one purpose and we all well born without defeat it can be carried on without any failure yes that is advice given by archbishop of canterbury okay now different activities can be aimed at one one purpose like different rivers reaching uh, the soul to see or many examples given there in the same way different activities can be aimed at one purpose and all well born without defeat it can be carried on without defeat so march towards france and conquer it so is advising the king to march towards kingdom of france and defeat it because we have a, a rightful i mean a claim is it to throne of france he says so what is the summary of the poem uh, he says that uh, honey bee can, uh, kingdom can be taken as best example of a peopled kingdom orderly state there also king is there many officers are there they are all doing different activities and their aim is one a orderly state so orderly state this uh, honey bee their common wealth of bees can be taken as the best example a metaphor so different activities aimed at one purpose can be carried on without any defeat so march towards france and defeat it that is a advice given by archbishop of canterbury to the king yes Uh, together it is explained so go through it once again read it several times and watch the video several times if there is any doubt let me know it i will clarify it okay na thank you